I'd invite the, I'd like to invite the church to stand up. We we'll plead to you, Father, for the power that is in the blood of your Son Jesus, was the renewal of the fellowship. Remain with us, teaching through your word. We we'll pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Church, may be seated. Lord to Jesus, my brethren, my sisters and women and teachers are going to have a class with Dr. Miguel Faria Lima regarding the life and the blood. Dr. Miguel is a master in periodontia, is a master in prothesis and a specialist in, in Implant in epidemiology. <laughs> Need to speak it slowly. <laughs> in, their, in their area of research and biomaterials from the University Federal University of Minas Gerais. We greet everyone who are present here on the Manaim and all the ones who are connected with us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our topic is the life and the blood. My brethren, how could we feel this life? We feel the hearts pulsating, our lungs filling with air. We feel the presence of the Holy Spirit that gives us fellowship, gives give us life. And the topic is the life on the blood, so that we may understand that without the opera wonderful operation and glorious operation of the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to reach the understanding of eternal life that's why we're going to read the text now. I'd like to invite everyone to read with us in Psalms. Psalm 104, 30. Send your spirit, they are created, and therefore renews the face of the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Send your spirit. The greatest blessing that we have, because the Holy Spirit of Jesus is the one who gives us life. He is the one who sent his Holy Spirit so that we may understand the project of salvation of the Father. And they are created. He knows us before the creation because He's the, the Word who has created all things. And that's why He knows each one of us who are here in this place and everywhere connected. And, and you renew the face of the earth. Only a wonderful operation of the Holy Spirit to renew the ones who didn't deserve salvation. But one day we have been able to reach, we have been reached through this wonderful Holy Spirit that Jesus brought to us, His sacrifice, and today we have an understanding of eternal life. We know that in this moment that we will be at God's feet. And now let's go to the next slide. The first video, the Lord allow us to, to compare things from the creative work so that we may be to understand the, the, understand the redemptive work. 
So when you see the blood flowing through the biological body, we'll be able to compare with the action of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. The blood is in the pro dynamic process. It reaches every arteries, veins, capillaries, and the body, the, the heart pulsating and sending cells that have functions of bringing oxygen, food, and purify, and also to to protect the biological body. And we know that this is the action of the Holy Spirit when we gather in fellowship, because the Holy Spirit also is able to reach each one of us, and at every moment He brings life, and brings comfort, comfort, He heals, and He confirms our names in the Book of Life, blessed be the name of the Lord. This biological action that takes place in the same way that the blood that pulsate constantly. The Holy Spirit is also operating in each one of us in a dynamic action that came from eternity and will bring us to eternity. So that everyone may know, science today shows that at every second, two, thousand, two million of cells are created. And what is the origin of the cells that form this blood that circulate the origin is, is in the bone marrow that our body has that constantly produces those cells, two millions of cells in a second. My brethren, my brothers and sisters, the ser women's service, five minutes of prayer, if the cells in a second, two millions of cells are produced. Imagine six hundred millions of actions of just the Lord at the moment in which the cells kneel down in five minutes of fellowship with the Lord, the acts of justice of the Lord are being poured out upon this church is the, is the action of the blood of the Holy Spirit. That's where ushers and deacons will never waste this opportunity because on Wednesday is the complement of the Sunday school and the Lord has operated in the renewal, the blessing, and we all, the ushers and deacons, are participating together. Sometimes we are at the door and the sister is kneeling down at this moment and we feel the church shaking. It is the, the moment, it feels like uh, that's the moment of the rapture, blessed be the name of the Lord. And where this glorious action comes from, the biological blood circulating and the Holy Spirit circulating, and we also can use a, a parallel. If I have a wound in my body immediately, the brain, it knows, it sends an order to the bone marrow, and the bone marrow produces more blood that is going to go there and re repair. And in the same way, when a servant comes to the church with a lower head and the head, who is the Lord Jesus loves each one of our lives, he sends all the resource and the Holy Spirit through the plea, through the praises, through the revealed word, comes and transforms and renew. And that's why this wonderful spirit is the one that renews our lives. And this is the action of the biological blood. These cells, they last a very short time because they continue action of renewal. That's why every day we are on the service. That's why every day we are on early dawn because that's how the Lord circulates our lives and the Holy Spirit watches us with the blood of Jesus and confirming our great blessing of salvation. And so the origin comes from an order because he is the head. And when he speaks, everything is, uh, takes place. And what is the origin of this blood that will circulate? Because the word of God is in Hebrew 4.12. It's alive and efficient. Whatever God said is fulfilled because it's life and efficient. It's, uh, a sharper than a uh, two-edged sword. Imagine a sword as, as sharp as it is. If you if I try to enter into a surface, uh, it may go deeper, but we cannot see the action of the Holy Spirit that is way goes way beyond that. Because if we understand the action of the Holy Spirit circulating, it's much goes much deeper than the human mind can be able to understand. And penetrate between the division, the soul, the spirit, and the bone marrow, the joints and the bone marrow. Joints speak about the uh, body that is structured and obedient to the word of the Lord. 
and this bone marrow that is producing this blood that gives life, the life of the church, so that we may be able to feel the presence of the Lord, and is willing to discern the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. So the Lord knows and recognizes every servant that desires to serve Him. So now we're going to see <coughs> the bone marrow, so we can understand the faith. The, the, the bone marrow is studied in such a way that even if you look the, in an exam, if you do a blood test, today science gives a uh, way of diagnos the diagnostics. They are very precise. Just so the sisters can understand, today the exams that are made, we are going to do like a centimeter. You can make a centimeter with your fingers. You um, put a centimeter in your hand here. No, no, shrink it ten times. Or the fingers are almost, the fingers are almost touching each other. This is the exam that is being made. They, they defend, no, identify not only the cells, but identifies the energy that the cells are producing. And through, through these energies, it's possible to know if that cell is healthy or if the cell is sick. Now I'll play a video. And in this video, we're going to see the bone marrow that we can see in an exam, I can barely see it. And it is the sword that penetrates every green point. is a cell that is generating energy. It is in its metabolism. So today the exams are very precise. Because whenever it comes on order, that cell was going to leave, it's going to migrate towards the direction that is ne that cell is necessary. So we make this Moving, we go deeper into the interior of the cell, and this is the micro universe. And now, if we look to the macro universe, the expansion of the universe, I cannot also measure measure it. I can understand that in my head from the micro to the from the micro to the macro. The the science can understand, but the Lord is from eternity to eternity. Because it, before the beginning, afterwards, God is great. We cannot explain it with science. But the faith that we have is what causes us to understand that we are going to go to the eternity to be with the Lord. And on this other video that we are going to see here, showing the energy of the cells. Each green point here, this exam is made where the cells are, that are normal, they are producing energy, and the exam captures whenever there is a call, they migrate. And there we cannot see the physical body of the cell, but it is the production of the energy that is being examined. Now, I would like to ask you to, to play this video again, so that the life of the servant that is obedient to the Lord goes to whatever the Holy Spirit gives direction. Not in a straight line, but it goes according to what God wants, generating light uh, energy. So there is come a moment in which the church will all be, we will be raptured and will be, will be at God's feet, not as a physical body, but only the energy of life that God gave us through the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to the next video. In Him there was life, and the life was the light of man. And so, what He sees in us is the light. It is the Holy Spirit that enters into our hearts and that gives us all this understanding. So let's go to the next video, to the next slide. Ezekiel 37, 3. One day the Lord brought him to the valley of very exceedingly dry bones. And the Lord said, Son of man, can those bones become alive? And I answered, Lord, you know. Here you see the bone marrow generating life. The bones are very dry. And in the text that we saw in Psalms, only the Spirit can give the renewal. And the answer the prophet, only knew, only the Lord can give understanding about life. Because on day and in eternity, He is the one who created, he designed man. His delights were with Him every day. The Lord sent the person of the Lord Jesus whom was the most precious for his life, you know, to come down to give us the eternal gospel to perish for us. The Lord deprived the presence himself from the presence of the Son to to uh, give us 
His presence, and today we can feel His presence. We can feel His wonderful love, because Lord, only You know. Salvation is a mystery, because only the Father knows. But let's go to next slide. When the word of the Lord, when hear the word of God, prophesies, prophesy, hear the voice of the Lord, and then my spirit will enter. Sometimes man thinks that the word of God can be measured, but when God says something, it's already being fulfilled, and He comes and is able to reach the smallest bones, the ones that the most humble that desire to hear uh, no more of the Lord enter through the ear. The salvation comes from the hearing, comes from the hearing, the, the bones inside of the ear. The smallest bones that enter into the mind and consolidate in, in the life of the Holy, that comes from the Holy Spirit. I call David my servant, the smallest one. He was taking care of the sheep of his father. And when he received the call, he went and he was a victorious one. That's why the word of the Lord touched the bone marrow, giving the renewal of life through his spirit. And it was created armies standing, glorifying the name of the Lord. And that's what the church is doing. Uh, world service and the entire world bring a word of prophecy that we are going to be in eternity. The valley of exceedingly dry bones. But the Lord is, is turning to this church. Prophesy, hear the voice of the Lord. A spirit of Jesus is going to come that will bring life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To, not, to the next slide. In this text here, it is our it is our condition. We were dust, we were nothing, but the Lord picked us up. We you see Titanic. It was used for the benefit of science, for the health of man. Sometimes a person loses a tooth and we install uh, an implant of titanium. But here it shows this picture here. The mines, men digging up the the ground on the earth, in seeking riches, seeking precious stones, and moving rivers from their original direction to bring comfort and power. And it speaks about the depth, going, growing deeper into the earth of the world, seeking knowledge that will push man straight from the Lord, philosophy, theology, not the word of God. But what God has for us, green pastures, only one path, and the mountain where we met, when we gather to hear the word of the Father, the clouds that bring us refreshing and His eternity. But the Lord allows us to develop ourselves through science to bring comfort to men. And here, the extraction of a titanium pin. We were dust, but one day, the Lord transformed us and brought us into green pastures because before we only saw an arid land we saw nothing the word of the Lord says that the bird even the strong lion when they saw what the destruction that man caused to the creative world they should not have seen this situation and Job iron was removed from the earth and from the stone is you cast a metal and stand his hand against a rock, remove the mount from the, its root. Uh, but where will you find wisdom? Wh and where is a place of intelligence? Man does not know its, uh, its worth and is not in the land of the living. My brethren, in the creative work, we do not understand the project of creation. Man may seek whatever they want riches, wisdom, knowledge. They do not transcend to eternity because the fear of the Lord is the wisdom. That's why he called the smallest one to be part of a church that is going to inherit eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to the next slide. Here is an image. If you have glasses, you can share to one another. If you, if you see this plant image, it shows the surface of the titanium that was treated so that you can put it on the bone and generate life. So now, now on the next slide, and as the blood comes, the cells begin to come close because only blood can produce life. We were like titanium, like dust. We had no right. But from the moment in which the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit 
uh, was able to reach us. We understand the project of eternity, blessed demon in the Lord. Now let's look at another slide. Then the blood begins to circulate, the formation of the blood, the, the bone, so the bone begins to grow with it within the titanium. So you see the cells are already get, coming into the titanium and form, forming life, forming blood. But it's not because the surface of that metal. It is the presence of the blood. And there is a parallel that we can make with Romans. But through his fall came salvation of his Gentiles to bring us to the... So that if, all, if you of the branch were broken, you being the, you have been inserted, drafted on, and now we are part of the root and and the seed of the olive tree. We are dust, we came from earth, but the project was for Israel. But Israel was removed because it didn't believe in the Savior. And we that didn't deserve, the ones that were in darkness saw a great light. The moment in which the Holy Spirit picked us up and placed on a living body where the blood of Jesus is filling every gap and this love that we feel for the Lord it comes to give us a function when we desire to work for the Lord. That's why science can give us a smile, the teeth, but never the joy of salvation. Because only an operation of the Holy Spirit revealing uh, our, to us our so Savior can generate life. And now to bring this text to a close, another slide, Genesis 24:51. We have an inheritance that is eternal. The genetics of Jesus, that through His Spirit has been able to reach us. One day the Father sent uh, His servant to go after a woman that was going to be the wife of His Son. And He came and found someone working for the Lord with a vessel on her, of waters on her hands. And he understood the genetics. That's the one that the Lord has revealed. And the text said, And Rebecca is before your face. Take her and go and be the wife of, of uh, the son of your sir, Lord. Rebecca, the faithful church, has the same genetics, working on the glorious work, doing the will of the Lord. The day in which the Holy Spirit comes and says, Go with that man, she says, I will go. The Holy Spirit will take the shirt because it has this genetics of eternity and go to eternity. The Holy Spirit is going to go up and the church will go together because it is the blood that gives life. The Holy Spirit that has taken care of us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. My brothers and sisters, we are now in our last class, and the topic right now is, which is with our sister Monica, Cristina, Medici, Costa. You can remain here. The list is um, the degree of this sister. She's and uh, she's uh, specializing in education uh, at distance. She's teaching of post graduation on university federal school, member of the group of research and teaching of reading and writing. She has a doctorate in education and uh, she works on the seat of Villa Velha. Very important. In the center of education, come Vem Serra. So when we present here uh, the degree of the person, we are saying that the, the, the per people that uh, bring in the message, they have the, the ability to do this. But before the word of our sister that is going to bring this seminar to a close, she's going to give a couple of information regarding this program that 
we are introducing in, at this time here. But, however, I was speaking with Pastor Julius Cesar, who has a special work that he does not only in the university, in the state of Espírito Santo, in Brazil, but also in the program that for sure is being implemented in the region, in a few cities of the northeast of Brazil, especially Pernambuco. He make, made a remark, he liked very much of what was said by the sister. He want, I want him to speak for five minutes so that to give an introduction to the last class, to the last topic that we're going to be, that is going to be ministered by our sister Monica. Pastor Jules says it, please. The brethren already know. Very well. I'd like to greet everyone the peace of the Lord. On this week, I was surprised in a very pleasant way. On the Wednesday service, I opened up the... i like to tell the church about the topic that was going to be spoken of in the service, organization and method. But after hearing what was said, in the beginning by Pastor Jodochi and afterward by Sister Monica, I even called Pastor, I also called her, Pastor Jodochi. The Maratha Christian Church is an institution of faith. What it produces is faith. What comes from eternity, we publish it. But when I look at the institution, Maratha Christian Church, we see that it produces citizenship. And my objective of work is to produce citizenship and the w control of violence. And one of the things that causes greatest concern in the government, especially the ones with with uh, being worked in, in the last six years, is how to contain the violence from the present to the future. And we have seen with the class that Sister Monica gave the beginning of, of a great walk that we began to do in the Maranatha Christian Church, yet another walk, a special walk. We have here a formation, Pastor Zdeci, that we use as a, as a project of changing, of, of uh, we produce musicians, the Maranatha Church produces more musicians than any other organization that generate musicians in the world. In, in the country, actually, and also for for the sign language in Brazil, Maranatha is now integrate to the spiritual, the the moral character, the character, educational character, and the social character, and above all, integrate this with the focus to create our children in the presence of the Lord, to educate them in the presence of the Lord, so that they are citizen not only of heaven but so that here that testimony may be exemplary and that they may be competitive and that they may be prepared and so that nothing else called me most more attention than uh, the picture that Monica has shown of a place that was completely disorganized and exactly what we teach in the control of our violence is organization methodology to cause a child to understand and doing his gross educational growth that the child needs to be and it needs to be formed right now so that in the future the child may enjoy what is being invested on in, in the present uh, I have been as a pastor uh, being a pastor in the ministry I was greatly blessed and happy because I saw what the government have not been able to achieve, we can also be, once again, an, an example for this country that is, is in such great need of a good examples. So now, let's stand up. Our sister Monica is going to take on here. I'm going to sing a, a little song, The Life is Jesus. Pode se assentar. Palavra 
Professora. The band can sit down. The word is with Sister Monica. Peace of the Lord Jesus. I'm very happy. My heart is filled and overflowing of the presence of the Holy Spirit because He is in our midst. And I could not have started after have, having heard so many uh, wonderful revelations, speaking a little bit about myself. Because for 50 years I've been uh, living in this church. It was in the Sunday school of the first church that worked on the Boar of Toca in Brazil. That my teacher, as she was preaching, also playing the accordion. I heard I met Jesus. And this infinite love was introduced to me. And this love that was introduced in the church had continuity, continued in my home. And I'm going to tell the mothers and the sisters that the, the fathers may not be inserted in this context because they're responsible for it as well. But inside of my house, my mother, she had and she had the zeal to continue what was uh, started in the Sunday school, what you teachers do today, this love from God. It touched me in a deep way, and I was able to understand from early age the call of the Lord for my life. As we have this wonderful role here, and we see this in the word of the Lord, the example that Sunday school was brought in the Sunday school. We're going to hear in Philippians 2 7. Philippians 2 7. But made himself be your action that before, though they were God, did not want to be like God, and, but empty himself, become a servant and looking just like a human. This love, this work, he, he was offered to me. He made known to me and you, mothers and teachers, this is our role to show to our children this great love that John 1.14 says the following in the beginning this love was uh, the word and the, the word was for God and the word was God and it became flesh and inhabited amongst us and this love that was was a was a word became a life tangible and that's what I learned and that's what your son and your your student needs to learn and in the church I learned the way to relate the relationship between Jesus and the people and in Matthew Matthew 14 14 when Jesus very upset with the death of John the Baptist he left the boat, but he saw a great crowd. He was moved in a deep way. And went to the people and healed them. And that's what it, it is, my, my sister, we need to do. We, we can't just, we don't need to look, but we need to see what our children, our students need. It's not just feeling sorry for them, but it's a great love, the love of Jesus that moved him to heal the sick. Because when the, Bartim the blind Bartimaeus said, Lord, have mercy on me, he said, see, this is the love that needs to move us, that needs to propel us. That's our challenge today is great, because the life we have a, we go through tribulation when we go enter into our homes and we don't see our children and our husbands and our obligations we don't see them we need to learn in the example of Jesus this example that he gave to us I'm not speak about work or making like 
bottle of milk for the children in early dawn or to pay the bills or changing diapers or making food or washing clothing. But it is to provide the appropriate teaching. And last week we brought the proper definition for this organization in order for us to seek methods, techniques, appropriate techniques to organize the life of our children and our, of our husbands so that there is an intervention that is made, is, can be made early enough so that in the future we may not see the suffering of our children and then look for resource. That's what we need to do. We need organization. That's why God gave us the ability, which is extremely human, exclusively human. The executive role is the cognitive abilities that allow us to perform tasks from the simplest to the most elaborate. And one of the models that there are many research regarding executive roles. I bring here Deli Gaiman, a neuroscientist from the University of British Columbia. She said that the first, the three executive uh, memory of work, the ability of the children to retain information, yeah, of associate, made it, make association of ideas and calculate mentally and establish priorities. And another capability is the control, uh, the, uh, limitation of control, so that I may be able to behave in according to the context. I cannot behave in, in a reckless way, especially in the house of the Lord. Our children, our students need to know that. And they have this ability. The ability to control my thought. The ability to control, the, have a selective attention without the distraction there are around me may perturb me so that I may not pay attention to the service or the Sunday school. Flexibility, which is a creative ability of man to adapt to the change of his daily life. Those are the three basic abilities that from them uh, many others are born. And uh, a simple example of ex executive functions uh, I'm going to bring to you, which is driving. Because executive functions, they, they do not work in an automated sense. They have to be trained. They have to be developed. So when you are beginning, beginning to drive, you, let's remember the day in which you begin to drive. There are so many functions that we need to do at the same time, right? You need to do the shift and the brake and the turn lights, and go backwards in a different position. So you need to be a pay, pay attention to what is outside, the, the direction that you need to take. So this ability needs to be you need to be pay sustained attention. You need to be have flexibility. Oh, it's not the left or the right. Oh, the dog break. Memory of work so that you may, are able to do at that moment if you need to change the shift or where my I'm supposed to step on the pedals, and that afterwards becomes so automated that you end up doing it, even having a conversation with another person is on on the side. It becomes very simple, but in it is in the same way with our children. For this, in order for you to drive in that way, what do you do? You drive. You drive, you drive, and drive again. That's how it is. So for these children, in order for them to develop those executive functions, they need to, to have repetition. Mom, where do I put the sneakers away? You know, there, there's the place. The other day, they they put the sneakers on the in the middle of the way. Um, the mother says so. Put it there. And the other day is the same thing. And the other uh, two months, you have to instruct your child in the organization of the things. The child will learn, and this will bring in the future many benefits. Is repetition, and regularity, and routine. You need to establish a routine for your child. When do you, I wake up? When do I eat? When do I brush my teeth? Or what time I'm, I'm going to spend to have fun and study? When should I take a shower, go to church, or work, to pray and read the Bible? 
you have to be persistent. We will establish the life of our children and prepare them for the future. Those executive functions that developed in the, in the life of the children in a very slow way. In the adult phase, after uh, the brain, the maturity of the brain that they have will have developed all of them. And your child, a nine years old, your nine year old child, or eight or nine year, years of age, can they organize the, their backpack to go to school? Do they remember if during that afternoon what are going to be the activities that they're going to? go through and what they need to bring, the book, the agenda, or they are going to have to go to, this, to the principal's uh, room and say, oh, uh, call my mom to bring the, the juice or uh, the material. No, this child needs to, need to have plenty and organization. When your daughter and son speaks non-stop. <laughs> they don't realize that they are bothering others. Maybe in the school they, they do not uh, respect the, the turn of their friends. They do not realize that they are bothering others. What is the executive function that this child needs? They need an inhibition of control. They need to have a limit. They need to know where they need to, the, until what point they need to go. Can your son plan and know exactly the topic that he's going to study and what the most important concepts on that work, where he will he be able to find that? Children in school, they are not able to do a research. You know what they need? They need to know, need plenty and set priorities. Have you sat with the child and do, done with him a one, one work, one homework, and two or three until they learn? If you have not done, they will never learn because executive functions, their abil cognitive abilities that need to someone else in order to intervene. It is someone else that is going to teach them. And it's in this social context that is organized by the family, that they are able to develop it. And besides their own obligations, there are many other things. Next slide. That they can do. Next slide. Okay. They're able to do many things at home. From two to three years, they can put their shoes away put that glass uh, on the sink, kitchen sink. They can organize that bed, put their clothing on the laundry machine. As they grow, they can uh, give food to the dog, put the, f put the garbage outside. This is, the, the, they need to have these responsibilities. They have the ability to do this. But what is the relationship of all of this to the biblical teaching? in the class of children intermediary and adolescents. This month, we have been having conversation with the children about organization of the, the service. Your children, they need to know how our service is organized. They need you teachers they need to have a conversation with them from their, the since they, they are babies, how the service needs to be structured. It cannot be done in a reckless way. It is all, it all has an order. We cannot come to the church and do whatever we want. We need to give, instruct our children. The church, the children, adolescents, intermediary, they need to know that there is a group of assistants and the meeting on the previous day to intercede for the service is going to be the, the other day, which is the group that they, they are a part of. They need to be aware of the prophetic service, how their service is organized, the worth and the meaning of the pleading for the blood of Jesus. 
what is the meaning of the period of praise in the prayer. Invite the children. You, when you ask them to pray, you stand up. It is on the Sunday school that you will learn the word, and then after the service, an assistant to the visitors and to the brethren in the church. We need to teach our children. They were born with this ability, and it will depend on the adult. It will depend on you, mother, because we have a, a women's a seminar here, and also the teachers, so that those abilities are developed. And in Exodus, please put in a projection. Exodus, keep this as a statute for you and for your children forever. What is a statute? Is a group of rules of organization and functioning of a collectivity. Collectivity is it for you, teacher, regarding the organization, the participation in the service of the children. And many in Isaiah, you may even think this. Oh, but how is it possible? How is it going to happen? I will be alone. In Isaiah. 40, 11 says the following. How, how as a pastor, will pasture his flock and he around his arms will gather the sheep are going to bring them to the corral. And that's our role. But the verse also says, the ones who are nursing, he will pasture them softly and you mother and teacher who is nursing our children the one who is going to guide you softly is the Lord Jesus our prayer today is this to empty ourselves in the same way that Jesus did to empty ourselves of every vanity I'm a professional uh, yes I work I study and yes I go to school but before everything, you are a mother. You are a teacher. And this role cannot be denied. Empty yourself. Look to our children, to our, to our sons and daughters, and see them, and to be moved by their needs, and to love them in such a way that you'll be able to act in fasting, in prayer, and organizing their lives at home. I praise this today. Lord, empty myself up. Cause me, make me as an example of Jesus. Jesus said, I live with you, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. And when the Spirit is in us, our actions are the same as Jesus's. That's the, the word that we have to all the sisters here. Well, don't go away. Look, Monica. Let's put quickly. Don't worry about it. That's how it is. You're going to place here quickly. The situation, the secular situation, when you have a child that is organized, that received instructions for their entire lives, from the from their birth and into the intermediary and the adolescence, the gain that they have with regards to the one that. The one that disorganized, I always say one thing that from my own experience of life, which is not a small one, <laughs> the following. If you bring to me a person that is very intelligent and beside that person, another person that is not that intelligent, but it is a person that is organized. If you put before me a person that is intelligent but is disorganized, I'd rather be with a person that is not so intelligent but is more organized. A person that is organized takes 
gain time regarding another one that is disorganized. The disorganized, their intelligence begin to go smaller because they enter into a competition and they end up losing. I remember of a person that that I followed with in my life. And that person always came home and I would always ask, how are you doing? And the person would answer, yes, I'm well. How's this school? And they went, oh, I'm not the best person because the best person is that other person. And I would say, don't worry about it. You will go and you're going to do whatever you need to do in your life. You need to organize and to remain being organized. And when the course was over, that person competed with the ones that, that were the best in the class. There was only one thing. That person won. The person that was organized won against everyone else in any competition by far because that person was organized. And I just wanted to say that you mentioned you brought some statistic data in last Wednesday. And it was very good to relate to the ones who who were not watching. It's just two and three minutes. I just want you to inform about this. You have something to say? Okay. Just picking up the example of a child that studies from the fifth to the eighth grade in their routine, the parents placed places inside of their own organization. One hour of study per day. We have 22 days, business days. So this child will have 22 hours per month, more than the one that do not have this extra time of study in their, their routine, their lives. And this, in five years, which is 60 months, adds up to 1,320 hours, which are 55 days of study. It's more, 20, and so this child that is in the fundamental teaching goes to high school compared to another child that didn't have this routine. This child will be far ahead of the other one that didn't have this routine. So if this routine is maintained and doing high school, which is routine of studying has to be greater than that, at least three or four hours per day because the content is too great. This child would have 88 hours more per month compared to the youth that do not have this routine. Without even mentioning the 1,320 hours from the fundamental, from, from the first grade. And this and adding all up, it's going to be 3,368 hours, which will be 132 days more. They will be ahead of their competition. So I followed the life of a of, uh, lady that in her routine that it was implemented. And the first time that she went to, <coughs> she went to college, she was, she was able to choose whatever school she wanted. And she kept all organized. She went to college. So uh, at the end of college, I want to be at this. So in order for this, I need to do this course. Uh, I need to go to this state. And then I'm going to do this. She planned it out from the moment into, in, in which she entered into college. It's a plan of 10 years. Now she's coming to the end to reach her final objective. This organization is the advantage for our children. Thinking on us to come home and you take a, off a shirt and throw it to the bed. And you keep saying, put it on top of the bed. At the end of the week, I'm go. I'm going to, oh, the child, how long is going to be your house keeping at the, at the weekend? But if you, if your child comes and the, the clothing is dirty, put it on the laundry bin. And so then uh, at the end of the week, when you go to do your housekeep, it's going to be much faster. So this organization reflects in our daily lives and our chi children need to learn that this is not easy. It's not easy. 
is very difficult. Imagine a child, eight-year-old child. That many times, the child, when the child doesn't do, does not organize uh, their backpack. The parents criticize them. Criticizing doesn't matter. Doesn't help. I always tell the parents, they do not do it because they don't know. Well, how come they don't know? They are 12 years old. No. Have you taught them? But they said they were. Uh, did you go there and check? No, they don't do homework and uh, call the parents. They have 10 work, homeworks that they didn't do from several subjects, but they said that they, they have done everything. Have you sit down? Did you sit down? Did you check if they follow their routine? This type of organization depends on of, of a great follow up. And quickly, if you do this, especially in the early f days, in the few first years of age. And I noticed that families that do this, and children, when they come to the sixth year of age, they develop without giving any headache to the parents. They do their own homeworks, they, they deliver their homeworks. Oh, they are worried about it, they go after it. And so we need to start in the first in their childhood. It's in the first childhood that this thing is developed better and develops with greater maturity. The first neural development is up to three years of age. Until three years of age we think that we think that we're not supposed to teach them oh babies, yes babies. But but you need to talk to them, put them on your lap and you say you are going to drink uh, milk here, and I'll go to grandma's house, or go to the daycare, they go to the church, in order to go to church and be organized, you can take a shower and pick up your Bible. It's from early age, until three years of age, my brethren, if you are able to do this. It's, it's not easy, but do not give up, because after that, they will develop, they're, they're going to grow up. But you might ask, oh, I have done everything, my child is now youth. Do not give up. In fact, we can never give up on our children. Sit down with them, have a conversation, organize their lives, and they will be able to. But they need you. And we also, we also need to be organized, right, my brain? Look, Monica, the teacher here, she is saying, Speaking about situation at home, she has already mentioned a couple of things regarding the church, which is our greatest concern. That's what we want. We want our children, when they are organized in the church, there, this teaching that no school surely has been able to give to them because it's a matter at a national level. But who will implement this? Have the ability? to place our children in a situation that is better, uh, in a competitive advantage. Why? Because the competition is not there to disorganize them. The children that is disorganized today in their work, they, they are not going to produce anything. They are not going to be able to compete with one another and after a while, the, the child is oppressed, a child that does not know, doesn't know what to do in their life, they don't have a method to live, and this, I'm not even saying what can happen, the loss of a family member, a father or mother, and they are not organized at the least in order to compete what is the compet competition that is in the world? Today, the children they have access to all this equipment out there, all the technology. In the church, they need to learn the first steps if they are organized, if they are instructed by the teachers, including the church. The teacher need to. They need to know how the things are. If they left the house disorganized, if they're going to go there to make a visit, they found a teacher there with the hair disorganized. 
what do they need to know? They need because because you relate to the children. So the child will absorb all of this. Today we have a great problem, which is the teachers, not all of them, but a large majority, they ended up not paying attention. They say obscene words, and they're using this as a resource for teaching. This has been a terrible evil in our schools today. The Maratha Christian Church does not depend on an institution. It's not a common institution. It's a work that the Holy Spirit is is doing to place at our disposal to live this and the other life. So we need to understand this. And our appeal is for the mothers, but particularly for the teachers, so that they may have their stand and being careful with the way they dress up. We cannot have the means of put people with put on display their flesh. If you go to the church, be careful in which how how you dress up. If you are not able to control yourself then you can't be a teacher. Go to the church and be sitting down but do not do not uh, bring a problem to the ones that have just being a new convert. Oh, I received a great blessing on that, but then you see a big display of flesh, then the situation gets complicated. Nobody's going to take care of our life. If you want, want to bring the world into the church, that's all right. You can do this, but in your church, not in ours. Maratha Christian Church needs to do this. Pastor needs to pay attention to this. And I, I want to bring we have to close, say the following. We have cases that need to be re corrected inside of our church. The individual comes with, with the drums. And Monica mentioned here the organization of the service is very important. The individual came one day. We're going to do this here. We're going to get out of our routine. First, so we're going to offer the wine, and then afterwards, the bread. Others say, oh, I'm going to distribute the bread and the wine so that the enemy is not able to do it. I'm the, the responsible for the table, but the table belongs to the Lord. So the people don't want to transform the service into a confusion. So I'm going to show this to our children. That's very important. The teaching is going to be given. And I just want to finish the service saying the following. We have understand that once a month it's going to be destined to the teaching, the guided teaching with the Bible. The topics are going to arrive, the teachers are going to make an effort. And this is not very difficult because Monica has, has a group with her and church all over the the country, they're getting prepared to teach the children with deficiencies. The teachings that we have here are ours. So our children are the ones who are going to give continuity to this work. They are better than ours. They're going to be better than us. Hey, my brethren, here's the word. I want to thank everyone who are listening to us and also with great joy. It's interesting. After today, the record of people watching in the entire country and part of the world. The work that's being done today here, that we're bringing this, this class, this seminar to a close. You don't need a blessing because you're not a pastor. Because pastor, the Bible says, they, they be married, be a husband of a single wife. Or so you cannot be uh, a female pastor. It would be wonderful. Imagine Monica as a pastor I would even sit down to watch her preachings. But in fact, we, the fact we have limits and people have limits. They said that since the world is saying, then you are supposed to do the 12 apostles. They, they are not 12 female apostles. 
that it does not diminish the world of the woman. And we see how much that represents for us for work like this, in which we can say that the love is here. Just a second, there was a vision here. You can share it. Well, you we can sing and then afterwards we're going to speak about the vision. There was a spiritual gift. The Lord is showing a vision. The mind of many sisters here. A few of them have great difficulty. They have difficulty to guide that, instruct their children in the Lord, give the, the instruction that in their mind, there were three divisions in the mind. Three divisions in the mind. I want to repeat because I don't have a feedback, sound feedback here. There were three divisions. The familial life, the second the secular life, the third is spiritual life. And what happened in the mind? Many had a part of it was completely filled and another with empty part and they didn't know how to coordinate this in order to put it all in, into a proper balance. And the vision was said the following, that this sister needed to pray. God, give me direction, so, because I want to know how, what to do. And a part of their life, a part of the secular life was completely filled, and the other empty. The family was empty in secular life. And the other had a spiritual field and the secular empty. And the Lord sent angels, and the angels of the Lord came to give instruction to them. It was a very difficult situation to be resolved. And the, and the prayer in the, in the the sister would pray asking help for from God, and in the vision the angels came and the angels worked with the sister so that as they did that, their houses were blessed as well. And I was able to see that throughout this year was a year in which the angels were working in the homes, so that would be a balance in the three parts: spiritual, familiar, and secular. We're going to uh, send you home with a, a, a apostolic blessing by the pastor of Paulo Futuro. Paulo Futuro is, is here from Brazil. His family, they work, f for, uh, they work for, for the government, federal government. They are living in Portugal. They're giving great support for us in Portugal. They have been a great blessing. We paid a high price for this. I don't know how much he received per month because he received this money from the government. <laughs> so, uh, Pastor Paul Sergio is going to say, we're going to, Lord, want to praise our name for your pres glorious presence throughout this entire period, Lord. The joy that we feel of being in your presence and also, Lord, in fellowship with our brethren here in this place, and throughout Brazil and the world, we praise you, Lord, for the riches of you, the teaching of your work, Lord. And we know, we have recognized all the deeds of the Lord. We pray in the name of the Lord. And the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the fellowship and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit of God be upon you and upon the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. I'd like to thank the brethren from England, especially, especially Pastor Demir, for the contribution 
that every now and then he sent to the Sunday school. Pastor Damir has been a great blessing for the work in Europe. And the bread, uh, the many bread from many other places, peace of the Lord. Be careful as you go home. Don't go in haste. The day is still lit and there is still food there.